Radical halogenation is an important reaction industrially, and it's the classical radical chain reaction that is taught as an example of that type of reaction. And because it's so classical and widely taught, it's really likely that beyond this course, people ex will expect you know radical halogenation to some extent. And so let me cover that reaction today. It's actually pretty interesting. We're talking about a reaction of chlorine and bromine almost exclusively. Uh, for energetic reasons, iodination doesn't work, and for energetic reasons, fluorination is avoided. So we're talking about radical chlorination and bromination, and let's talk about chlorination first. We're talking about starting with a molecule of chlorine, and when chlorine is treated with the right wavelength of light, as we represent as H nu, or heat, and this is uh, hundreds of degrees, like perhaps 400 degrees. Homolytic cleavage of that chlorine-chlorine bond occurs. So we get two of these guys out of that reaction. And this is that step that we talked about as initiation, radical reactions. In the presence of an alkane, let's use methane as an example. It's simple and easy to begin with. A chlorine radical, which, as you recall, is electron deficient. It needs one more electron for its outer shell will donate one of its only unpaired electron, and this breaking this sigma bond, which donates one of its electrons, to form a table neutral molecule, HCl. And as that is happening, this single electron then is left over is associated with carbon. So the product is CH3 methyl radical plus HCl. We've generated another radical, and it's in the presence of chlorine gas. So in a second step, methyl radical is a radical one electron reaction to cleave that sigma bond and regenerate the chlorine radical. So this is a way of making methyl chloride. And in fact, it's an industrial way of making methyl chloride. This is that business we talked about where a radical reacts with a stable neutral molecule to break a bond in a homolytic way to generate another radical. So this process can repeat. And so this chlorine radical can react with another molecule of methane to make another molecule of HCl plus methyl radical and so on and so forth. As this is happening, we're gradually depleting the amount of methane in the reaction and building up the amount of methyl chloride in the reaction. So look at this. As soon as we have some product in there, there will be the opportunity for a chlorine radical to abstract a hydrogen from the product, methyl chloride, rather than from methane. As this methyl chloride builds up its product, there's a greater and greater chance that this reaction will happen to the point where eventually this will be the preferred reaction and we will be making a new radical and that radical, of course, can react with chlorine to form a chlorine radical plus dichloromethane, methylene chloride. Now, of course, over time, we'll de begin depleting and eventually deplete much of the methyl chloride we had in there and begin to build up more and more of the dichloromethane. And that dichloromethane then can be the reactant with chlorine radicals. So that ultimately, this reaction of methane plus chlorine under radical conditions, heat or light, gives a mixture of products. We need to write them all down. And we could expect a reaction mixture that contains some of everything in here. Even if we just uh, start with one molar equivalent of chlorine, we'll have some of everything in here. If we start with a great excess of chlorine, well, of course, we'll end up with carbon tetrachloride. Industrially, this is still important, even though it can make a terrible reaction mixture, because these compounds have bonding points that are distinctly different from each other, so they can be separated by distillation, and that's very useful. Of course, the chlorination reaction can happen with bigger alkanes. What if we start with butane? Treat with chlorine, and we'll say heat. Delta stands for heat. There are two types of hydrogen in this molecule. That's at a secondary carbon. It's at a primary carbon. In the propagation step, where the chlorine radical abstracts a hydrogen from butane, that chlorine radical has two different options. If it abstracts the primary hydrogen, 
that will lead to 1-chlorobutane. If it abstracts the secondary hydrogen, it will lead to 2-chlorobutane. Radicals tend not to rearrange, so wherever that hydrogen is abstracted, ultimately we'll have chlorination. So we'll have two products. We can write like this. Now their ratio is actually a result of two different components. One is the number of hydrogens that each carbon has. Since there are two hydrogens here and three hydrogens there, the statistical ratio would favor the reaction at the primary site in a three to two way. But more importantly, the relative stabilities of the radicals that we're forming in that step that determines the region chemistry, where chlorination will happen, by determining where the hydrogen is abstracted. The relative rates of that step turns out to be extremely important. I'm going to write this molecule again. I'm going to write chlorine abstraction to make the secondary butyl radical. And alternatively, that chlorine could make the primary butyl radical. The relative rates of the formation of these radicals is partially determined by how readily they're made, how stable they are. The more stable the radical, the more easily that convert hydrogen bond is broken. And once this radical has been made, that rigid chemistry is determined. Halogenation will occur at the secondary site or the primary site. So the ratio of the formation of these two radicals is important. And that ratio turns out to be 3.9 secondary radicals formed for every one of the primary reactions. So it's 3.9 to 1. That's a significant selectivity in favor of the secondary. And there was a significant selectivity in favor of the primary on the basis of the statistical thinking we did. So the actual product ratios, and for that reason, the radical chlorination of larger alkanes isn't very useful. It's just not selective enough. The ultimate uh, numbers turn out to be, in general, the tertiary halogenation is acts faster and is formed more in greater quantity than secondary. But that ratio was roughly 5.2 to 3.9 to 1, and that means that we aren't going to get sufficient selectivity to be synthetically useful. However, a different outcome happens for radical bromination, and the radical bromination is 1640 to 82 to 1. So this is a reaction to place Cl in a molecule. This is a reaction to place Br in the middle. And because the selectivity highly favors tertiary over primary and secondary, for alkanes, radical bromination is synthetically useful if there are tertiary hydrogens in the molecule, which will be brominated selectively with very little contamination from the secondary bromination and virtually no contamination from primary bromination. So, just quickly as an example, if we were to want to make an alkyl halide from this molecule, we would use bromine, we probably would use light to generate the radicals, and we could expect to get very good yields of selective bromination at that tertiary position. And because this is the only way you know to functionalize an alkane, I predict in an organic synthesis reactions, you will become very familiar with using radical bromination to functionalize alkanes when it can be done selectively at a tertiary position.